Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, our God reigns. Hallelujah, our God reigns. Reign, King Jesus, reign. Hallelujah, hallelujah. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God. What a mighty God. What a mighty God we serve. Great is thy faithfulness, O Lord, our Father. There is no shadow of turning in thee. Thou changest not thy compassion, they fail not. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto us. Who is like unto you, O Lord? Who is like unto you, O Lord? You are God. You are God all by yourself. There is no God like you, Jehovah. No God in all the heavens. No God in all the earth. No God quite like you. You are awesome in this place, Almighty God. You are awesome in this place. You are worthy of all praise. To you, our hearts we raise. You are awesome in this place, Almighty God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. They, one songwriter says, There is none like you. No one else can touch our hearts like you do. We could search throughout eternity, Lord, and find there is none like you hallelujah there is none like you no one else can touch our hearts like you do lord we could search throughout eternity and we'll find that there is none like you hallelujah hallelujah Hallelujah. Mm. You are awesome in this place, Almighty God. We praise you, we honor you, we adore you, we magnify you, we declare that you are God from beginning to end and there is no place for argument. You are God all by yourself. Hallelujah. 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 Our God reigns, our God reigns, our God reigns. God is a good God. Yes, he is. It's the 4th of July. Hallelujah. The day when the Americans were set free in the natural. Hallelujah. The day when America was set free in the natural the day of independence. Hallelujah. But God is good. And so independence came long before 4th of July. Independence came when Jesus died on the cross. The true independence is who the sun sets free hallelujah the only independence is who the sun sets free for only who who the sun sets free is free indeed is free indeed it's interesting how the american system says they are the land of the free and the home of the brave hallelujah the land of the free and the home of the brave uh, yes i believe that it is still the land of the brave but i am not a hundred percent sure about the home of the free i am not a hundred percent sure about the home of the free and this is not about bashing america as i said every time i love america i have so many family members living there i have so many spiritual family members living there people who i love hallelujah living there and where you live is where i must love come on hallelujah so i'm just saying though the reality of our situation as believers as christians we must not lie to ourselves and think that because we love someone or we love somewhere that we must we must lie about the reality of what it is we mustn't gossip or prophesy negatives about who about the people that we are around about our church our community or our home or our our country we shouldn't do that not encouraging that at all but we it, in order to be able to pray productively in order to pray productively and strategically we must accept the truth about ourselves the truth about our family members the truth about our community the truth about our nation the truth about your nation is that America is no longer free. America used to be free. 
used to be free. The founding fathers tried their best to make sure America was free, and America was free for a while. America was free where anyone could pray anywhere, anyhow, anytime. Come on, that's when America was free. And it doesn't matter, I'm a Christian, I believe in Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I believe that Jesus Christ is the one true and living God, and there is no other God. But I'm not going to arrest, if I was in power, I would not arrest or hang or murder a Muslim or a, or a, or a Jew or um, a, a Buddhist or a Scientologist because they believe different from me. God in his sovereignty allowed all men to make their sovereign choice and believe what they want to believe, including not him. Paul, in, in one of his writings to the Corinthians, um, as he was coming in, he said, My brothers, I see that you are quite religious. I see that you are quite religious and that you have uh, several gods. As I'm coming into your city, I see several the altars with all the different gods. And you also have on your altar a God called the unknown God. That's the God I come to speak to you about. Can I talk to somebody early this morning? I'm saying to you that freedom, hallelujah, freedom of choice. That's right, Sister Melody. A place that is free has freedom of choice. Freedom to pray in a space. And people are freedom to walk away. Not to tell me that I am not free to pray. That's what I have as an issue with the United States of America. Please don't get offended. Don't be upset. It's the absolute truth. And I'm not upset. I'm not speaking against America. No need to get your, your red, white, and blue blood all boiled up. Please. Truth must be truth. Freedom means that I am free to pray in a classroom. Quietly or out loud. And if someone is offended then they have the right to say i am offended by your loud prayer but you still can pray pray quietly paul says in in in, um, in in corinthians if you are in the church and you are praying in tongues loudly and there is no interpreter he says go sit quietly in a corner and pray unto your pray with your, yourself unto god he never said stop praying because that would be taking away the person's freedom to pray. Come on, somebody. And Paul never said that, never wished that, and never wanted that. And that's not what God wants. And so freedom we must understand and not lie to ourselves or believe the lie that because we, we, the, um, everyone has free. Some people have freedom to shut down some people. Then what about the freedom of those who they're shutting down? Don't they have freedoms? And so the only people in America that are not free are Christians. Christians are not free. Muslims can pray anywhere. Wiccans, witches, warlocks, demons, devils, lodge people, Illuminati people, um, atheists, agnostics. Every other person can carry out their religious beliefs and their processes. Anything that they do, there are statues of Baphomet in Detroit. But you cannot put up a cross on your own lawn. You cannot put a cross on your lawn. You cannot put nativity um, activities for Christmas on your own private lawn. But in public spaces, there are statues of Baphomet. I'm telling you. And so Christians are the only people that are not free. And therefore, Christians should never come to that place of deception, of thinking, Oh, I am an American, therefore I am free. Or I live in America, therefore I am free. You are not free. And if you know that you are not free, then it guides how you pray. Are you hearing me? So I'm not talking so that you can say, um, Oh my... Uh, I, I feel guilty that I'm not free. I feel bad. No, I'm saying this because we need to pray concerning freedom. We need to pray concerning freedom because the same thing happened in Rome. The same thing happened in Israel. Jesus and, he, and his followers were the only ones not free to declare the gospel of Jesus Christ. They were not free. John the Baptist was not free to speak the truth according to God's order and he lost his head. 
the disciples were not free to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ and therefore they were crucified. John was boiled in oil. All these things happened to only the Christians because they were the only ones that were not free. <coughs> Hallelujah. And so, we must know. Come on guys, again, stay focused. Don't miss what I'm saying. Remember, I'm not knocking America. I am calling out believers in Jesus Christ to recognize that you could easily be like the martyrs, the martyrs of 2,000 years ago. If you believe that because you are living there and you have access to, to, to Target and, to, um, and to, to, to Best Buy or um, Best whatever, um, to Gap and to Gucci and all these things and you have access to buy the best cars and to live in the best house that means you're free then you are deceived access to those things doesn't mean you are free freedom to worship freedom to pray freedom to to to, to exercise your religious rights any and every time and everywhere is what freedom is if you are standing if you're going down the street and the Muslims are having a prayer session. You don't need to call the police. You just need to go a different direction. You just need to go a different direction. They're not supposed to offend you. They're exercising their freedom to pray to whom whichever God they pray to. If the Buddhists are in the middle of the street or on the sidewalk and they're praying and doing whatever they do and you're coming down the street they believe in something different from you. You might think that they are worshipping a false god, idolatry, and all of that, and you are incensed by it, but you do not have the freedom to tell them not to worship a false god. You don't have that freedom. And so how come so many of these people, including higher governmental order, have the freedom to tell us that we cannot call the name of Jesus? We cannot pray in the name of Jesus. We cannot pray... In our space, in our private space, I was told that one lady was was um, was the, her boss was told that she's going into the into the bathroom at lunchtime and praying. Someone heard her in the bathroom praying at lunchtime, and the boss threatened to fire her because she was praying in her own quiet time, in her own quiet space, because she was not doing rituals and raising up demons out of the toilet bowl. She couldn't do. She couldn't pray. In the toilet in the privacy of the toilet she couldn't pray she was threatened with losing her job how do you consider that freedom and so I'm pointing out these things not to say America is wicked or disgusting or any of that I'm pointing out these things to say America needs prayer prayer in the quiet prayer intercession prayer in a closet prayer 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 America needs prayer now more than any other time and it's not just America Canada Maybe even worse. England. Maybe even worse. Even Jamaica. Even Jamaica. Things are getting tighter and tighter as the first world culture and the first world um, dominance begins to spread its wings across other nations. It is getting to that place. And so we must continue to pray. All I'm doing is warning God's people. Do not allow us to wake up one day and find that if we are considered Christians like in the northeast of Nigeria you could be shot you could be imprisoned it's coming it's in Revelation persecution is gonna come again like 2000 and plus years ago it's going to come but if we do not pray it will come faster it will come faster than we expect are you hearing me, people of God? Satan knows that he has a short time. And so he's pushing hard. He's pushing with sickness. He's pushing with sexual immorality. He's pushing with fear. He's pushing with pride. He's pushing with lust. He's pushing with greed. He's pushing with uh, 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 imprisonment, taking away freedoms. He's pushing in every area that he can. And unless the believers stand in agreement, recognizing what he's up to and begin to pray, we will fall victim. We will fall victim to what he's doing. 
And so I know that Satan is saying to some people right now, look at you. Who are you talking about? Why are you talking about America? What's Jamaica? Murder capital. What's Jamaica? Primitive. Third world country. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're listening to Satan. I'm not saying anything bad about America. Saying that there is no freedom is not bad. What I'm saying is, American Christians are not praying hard enough for their rights which they got through the Constitution, right to religion, freedom of religion, a constitutionally protected activity is not being extended to Christians. That's all I'm saying. And we need to pray because Satan is at the root, at the foundation of trying to remove the constitutionally protected right of Christians. All other religions can have their freedom. They're constitutionally protected right, except Christians. That means we're the ones he's after. And I'm calling to all Christians, all Christians, begin to pray specifically. Stop just praying only for your family, for your breakthrough. It makes no sense for you to have air condition in hell. Are you hearing me, people of God? It makes no sense for you to have air condition in hell. You will not enjoy it permanently. And that's what is happening. When you pray only for your family to graduate from university, to have nice jobs, to drive nice cars, to live well, and all you do is go to work, make money, go home, live in the comforts of your house, and you can go shopping, and you come back, and you buy nice things, and anyone that comes to your house sees nice things in your house, but your nation is falling apart, your Christian belief system is under attack, and you are not standing in the gap for that, then you are living in an air-conditioned house in hell. That's right. See, Brother Marlon is saying, other religions go to court and, 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 and argue for their constitutional right to defend their, 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 their beliefs. But Christians get thrown out of court. Don't you see something wrong with that, believers? God says, if you're ashamed of him, if you're ashamed of him in this earth, he will be ashamed of us before his father. That's what Jesus said. We cannot be ashamed of Jesus. The thing that must be on the top of the list of our prayer must be the constitutional right. Both the constitution of heaven and the constitution of the earth. The right to freedom of religion. We must pray. Come on, Jessica. You and your parents, you and your family, you and all, all of you who live in America. Melody, come on, Patricia, all of you. Michael. All of you who live in America, those on Instagram, on TikTok, on Facebook, on YouTube, if you live in America, if you live in Canada, if you live in England, pray for your constitutional right to maintain your Christian values and principles. Don't you see that it is dangerous when you cannot even put something that represents Jesus on your own lawn that you are paying for, that you are paying for? your own private property if you put a cross and someone can see it from the street they say that they're offended because when they drive by they see your cross but they can put up skull and crossbones they can put up witches in black gowns and peak hat and on a broom you're offended by that but you can't complain and if you complain nothing will be done but they can complain that you have a cross on the lawn and they're offended and you must stop. How is that? Hallelujah. And so I thank God this morning. Yes, I, I, I started off kind of kind of aggressive, but I start well not aggressive, but um at a at a at a harsh place. But guys, please, I'm begging you, understand what's going on. God is not in the mood for for, for, for pet and powder in this season. God is saying, I must reveal my truth to you because these are perilous times. The days have already been shortened. Don't you notice how much once it used to take 24 hours for a day to complete, now it, it completed in 12. The days are shortened for the elect's sake and that's why I'm begging the people I love, my family and friends. Hallelujah. 
to, to, to come to grips, to come to the understanding, to come to the place of realizing that now is the time for the elects to arise. That's why I'm begging my brother Owen to step up and to step up back into his place of peace because the time is short and the people are falling away. More people are becoming aggressively satanic aggressively demonically oppressed and possessed than ever before because the satan is always pouring out pouring out pouring out his spirits upon all flesh as a counter to jesus pouring out his spirit upon all flesh hallelujah and so it's time for us to rise up people of god it's time for us to stop thinking about self and think about the lives of others it is not his will that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. You should never complete your prayers without praying for the salvation of mankind and for the peace of Jerusalem. Somebody need to take note of that. Please, I'm begging you. You should never complete your prayers under any circumstance. Under any circumstance, you should never complete your prayers. Any prayer you pray, you should never complete your prayers your general prayers that is if you're praying specifically about someone who's sick or you're praying for someone that's fine but you should never complete your devotional prayers without praying for the salvation of mankind and the peace of jerusalem let it not be said that you have never heard this let it not be said that you have never heard this pray for the salvation of mankind and the peace of jerusalem this is a mandate from the spirit of the living god himself amen good morning brother randall positive god bless you hallelujah and so good morning holy spirit of god and welcome we see that you are ripe and and and, um, and active in the atmosphere good morning to all god's people in the mighty name of jesus christ good morning to those of you on tiktok on instagram on facebook and on youtube this is the place where you will hear truth even when it causes your teeth to nudge and your body to tremble you will still hear truth but you will hear truth in love truth not to condemn but to cause a resurgence to cause a restoration to cause a reconciliation truth must not hurt truth can make you uncomfortable but it must not hurt amen hallelujah so this is the place where you will hear truth and endure truth regardless of what kind of fruit you are bearing because truth must bear good fruit amen and so truth is what we are looking for so remember please I'm, I'm, I'm saying it again because I feel the Holy Spirit giving me an unction to say it again. Never complete your general prayer without praying for the salvation of men. Not the salvation of your family only. The salvation of people in the world. And the peace of Jerusalem. And the two scriptures that aptly says this. God says, I will bless those who bless Israel. And he says that we're to pray for the peace of jerusalem those are commands that he has given to all who who name the name of jesus christ amen and then the one other scripture that says it is not his will that any should perish but that all should come to repentance jesus wants all men every single one the agnostics the haitis the, the buddhists the, the the sikh the muslims the, the, the whomever wherever they are and whatever they are doing those who worship the sun the moon the stars those who worship the sea those who are into witchcraft high level obia those who are into the to, to the secret societies the masonic lodge the illuminati and any other secret society those who are all people every single human being that is alive that has eyes and ears and nose and mouth and a soul and a spirit just like us god wants them in heaven God wants them in heaven. And so there are some that have been misled. Some that have come up through the rite of passage. Their father was a lodge man or a, or a Illuminati man. And they, he brought up his sons in that vein. They've never known Jesus. They've never known church. They've, that's all they've known. So they've not been exposed and gotten an opportunity to accept Jesus. We got to pray for them. We got to pray for those. So their father has, has died and passed on. And he has gone. But all they have known is the path of evil. And we got to pray that God will intervene 
intervene. God will intervene. We must intercede so that God can intervene. Come on, can I say that again? We must intercede so God can intervene. There are hundreds of millions of people across the world who have grown up into religions that are, that are idolatry, false doctrines, false gods, false way of living, and they have never known Jesus. They've never heard of Jesus. And anyone who tries to bring Jesus to their attention gets cut down, destroyed, crucified. Just like Jesus came to show the Pharisees and the children of Israel a new way, and they call for Barabbas, an evil man, a wicked man. They call for Barabbas instead of Jesus. Today, they're still calling for the evil one. They're still calling for the alphabet people. They're still calling for the secret societies. They're still calling for the presidents that are believing in evil, the prime ministers that believe more in evil than in good. They're still calling for those. It is not unusual. They call for the evil over Jesus, and so they will continually call for evil over us unless we intercede. And so, come on, we must intercede so that God can succeed in causing a new breed. Come on. Because outside of that, mankind, mankind will bleed. Amen? We do not want that to be the portion of mankind. And so we must, in this season of shortening of the days, develop a passion and a compassion for the souls of men. You don't have to necessarily be an evangelist like, um, like Brother Albert Toms. You don't have to be out there on the street saying, Repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. That's fine if you're called to that. But you don't have to do that kind of evangelism. Your evangelism can be done in your, in your quiet, quiet place. Your evangelism can be done, Father, I thank you that you are the Savior of souls. I thank you that you did not die in vain. I thank you, Lord Jesus, that on the cross you said it is finished. It is finished means that every single person has access to the finished work of the cross, has access to the finished work that will save the lost, have access to the death, burial, and resurrection that you performed in order so that my and might have life and life more abundantly and so I thank you Lord for salvation for my family, salvation for my community, salvation for my nation salvation for this world I speak to the seven continents of the world and I say the blood of Jesus the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus the blood of Jesus your Lord I intercede in the spirit and I intercede in the natural I call forth dead works to come alive I call forth dead souls all over the world to come alive I call them forth like you call forth Lazarus I call them forth in the mighty name of Jesus for Lord you didn't die in vain you didn't face the pain in vain and so God I call them forth I intercede for them God that you might intervene in their lives in their situations I call forth those who have been tricked into false religions I call for those who are in false doctrines. I call for those who have been deceived. Ah, oh, God Almighty, I thank you that you will cause them to leave those false places that they are they are trapped. Call them forth, Lord Jesus. Yanda shato koroboko sandarabahaya. Yes, Jesus. Hallelujah. Fire to every chain that is trapping your people in the places of immoralities every Solomon Gomorrah spirit that has taken over towns taken over counties, taken over states, taken over nations Father release fire against those chains, fire against those hypnosis, fire against those principalities and powers and we command those for whom you died to be set free now in Jesus Christ's mighty name Hallelujah Hallelujah Oh, glory to God. Now, you might be saying, Pastor, I, I can't pray like that. I didn't give you that example for you to imitate what I did. I gave you that example for you to know what you are supposed to do and the direction that you're supposed to take it. Amen? And so all I'm saying is, in your own way, the way you can do it, in your own style, whether you can pray in the Spirit to back it up or not, Beside the point, don't be distracted or deterred by your, not, your, your inability at the moment to pray in the language of the Spirit. That's not an excuse. Stay in what you can do. Father, I thank you for salvation for the people. If you're Jamaican and you can only pray in Patwa, God understands Patwa. Lord, may they thank you today 
For all of the people them with dead in sin. All of the people them that don't have Jesus within. All of the people them with them lifeline well thin. Lord, may I beg you, bring them back to your place. Draw them near Jesus. Draw them near wherever them live, God. Lord, me don't know all of the country them all over the world, but you know them. And so may I ask you, God, save the people them and bring peace to Jerusalem in the name of Jesus. That's if that's all you that's all you can speak patois. If you have standard English as your as your language, but you do not know how to put the things together, just pray according to your compassion for the souls of men. Lord, I thank you this day that you did not die for men to still die. You died that men might live. And so I ask you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. That you will cause life to enter those who have been deceived. Those who have died untimely by the way of sin. Those who are destined for hell by way of deception. I'm asking you Lord Jesus, redeem them, restore them. I'm interceding that you might intervene in their situation. That Satan will not say, aha, where is your God? Amen. It's important guys. We could spend all of the time praying for each other, praying for our issues, praying for our sickness, praying for our breakthroughs, praying for all the things that concerns us. Lord knows I could give you a long list of things that I would love for you and I to agree concerning my own personal life, my own health, my own situations. We could spend the whole hour and a half interceding for just me. But if God desires for us, to travail for those who do not know him. I know for sure that even in my imperfection, even in my imperfection, if the things that I am facing, God says that's how I'm calling you home. And he calls me home tomorrow. Home is where I will go. To that place where he has prepared for me in heaven. And so I don't have to be worried about wanting to live long and live strong and have all this health and strength and prosperity and good success. That's fine if God in his sovereignty decides to give it to me and to give it to you. But what about those who have no hope? What about those who cannot cope? What about those who think that the only way out is by a rope? We are the only hope they have through Jesus Christ. They know and can experience no other God except in us and through us and so we're the ones that have to say father whatever you have to do do it whatever you have to do lord do it for those who are lost do it for the children who will only know buddha do it for the children who will only know idols false god do it for the children who will only know that there is no god that's all they will be exposed to. They will not be given a choice. They will grow up thinking that there is no God. That they are their only God. Do it for them, Lord. Hallelujah. And so we must pull back from being so self-focused, so family-focused. I'm not saying don't pray for your family. I'm not saying don't pray for yourself. And for the things that are happening to you. I'm not saying that. And I'm not saying that we're not going to do that as well. But. There comes a time. And that time is now. When the children of God. Have to become serious evangelists. If not on the street side. Or in the tents. Or in the highways and the byways. In our prayer closet. In our prayer closet. I must tell you. For transparency and fairness. I am not the best evangelist there is. I am not. I am telling you. I know some people, you know like how you can tell when a prophet is a prophet and someone is just prophesying by the Spirit. I had that rude awakening one day when Pastor Marsh and I went to a function and we were praying and the Lord was using me to just minister some, some words of encouragement to someone. But I'm not a prophet. I've said that. Um, God has not told me that I'm a prophet. Persons have said so because I've prophesied. But in my spirit... I feel like I'm a teacher. I feel like if 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 and when the time um, is is appropriate, God will more bestow the apostolic mantle 
on me and apostles will prophesy as well but in terms of the office of prophet I am not convinced that I am called to that office I'm convinced that my pastor Marsha is called to that office and I'm convinced that other persons are called and you can tell if you are in the spirit you can tell when someone who is called to the office is ministering and when someone who is ministering by the spirit is ministering there is just an aura an atmosphere there is a difference in the words that are said in 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 what happens and how it is executed there's a difference in the connection come on and so someone who is ministering by the spirit can minister accurately can give you an accurate word but it doesn't mean they're a prophet it just means that they're a vessel that brings an accurate encouragement from god amen hallelujah but a prophet one of the difference between a prophet and someone who prophesies um, is that a prophet can speak something that God didn't say and God still bring it to pass. Are you hearing me? A prophet can, can speak something that God didn't say and God still bring it to pass. Pastor, how is that? Okay. Do you honestly believe that God told Elijah to call down fire from heaven on those 102 soldiers? I see no evidence, even in the interaction and the exchange, that Elijah went to pray and say, Lord, what should I do? And God says, send fire for them. Because the Apostle White Davis. Oh, hello, good morning, Apostle. Good, good morning, Apostle White Davis. Oh, Heather. Oh, bless you, bless you, bless you, Apostle. Great, 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 great seeing you. Good morning, good morning, hallelujah. Yes, and that's right, Marlon, and Elisha, and the bear. God didn't want to destroy those children because they made a mistake and, and teased Elisha. Death as a result of, um, of, of, a, of a mistake, of children being children. And so I'm saying to you that when you are deep in God, when you are powerfully embedded in God, there is a difference with how God functions on your behalf. There's a difference. Come on. Amen? And this is something that we must know. And that's how you know the difference between one who is authentically in an office. For example, um, there are, we have apostles. Uh, uh, an uh, apostle, I know that you are a humble woman of God and you will not take offense to this. But there are apostles, um, dime a dozen. We have more apostles and prophets these days than dirt and stone. Apostles like whoa. And most people in the body of Christ have no way of identifying who is authentic and who is not. Who is authentic and who is not. And I'm telling you, by the grace of God and by the spirit of the living God, it is not as hard as you think. The Bible gives you some principles. Now, one can be a prophet or an apostle by calling by the purpose of God, but they have matriculated into that office sooner than they should. So when God um, visits someone and says, I have called you to be my apostle. I have called you to be my prophet. They don't know that like, 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 um, like Abraham had to wait many years before Isaac came. Like, like, like Samuel had to wait many years before he was ordained and, and operating as a prophet. Like David had to wait 14 or 15 years before he took the throne in Israel. Come on, there is a season between when you are told that you are a prophet or an apostle and when you actually get into the office functioning. There's some work that needs to be done. Paul was called to be an apostle. Come on, after he get, got his eyes through Cornelius. Hallelujah. After, not Cornelius, um, what's his name? Oh, Jesus. His name was just in my head. Um, yes, that gentleman that Jesus sent to, to, um, to go touch Ananias, right, Ananias. When Ananias touched Paul and he received the sight and then he was baptized, when he came up and Ananias laid hands on him, that's when his apostleship was bestowed upon him. Come on, 
because that's what God had called him to. But he had to matriculate through the system. Paul is one, you will see it in the word, that says that I used to be an evangelist. Paul, used to, Paul had to evangelize first because he had to learn the value of humility. He had to learn the value of what is considered, quote unquote, the simple office. He had to function in that office, wanting souls to come to Christ before he got to the office where he could teach and manage and order and direct the souls of men. If you don't know how souls come, how are you going to manage them and control them and dictate to them? You don't understand the power of bringing them. And so there is a process that has to happen. Not only that, when Paul was an evangelist, he was an evangelist for a while. And then after that, God says, now I need to teach you the, 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 the discipline and the ways of myself in order to be an apostle for me. And so God took him away into the Arabian desert for three and a half years and taught him his character and nature and, 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 and his presence and poured into him. So that when he came, he understood. And even after he came out of the Arabian desert, Paul still had to learn how to be an apostle. He still had to walk the walk because remember, he was, he, 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 he was still so high and mighty in his apostleship that he would not forgive John Mark when John Mark walked away from the mission too soon. And so he and Barnabas got into a tiff. But because Paul knew through humility, he knew through his continuous journey that, that, that it was a cycle, that a, a, a parse, a, a something that he had to learn continually, he was apologetic later down in the scriptures. And he says, hey, can you send John Mark, please, because he's valuable. He didn't hold a grudge permanently because he knew that was not of God. That was not according to the office. Hallelujah. Um, Apostle Heather says, I was told by prophets years before I even, I even was functional. That's it. There has to be a process. A process. It is difficult for me to accept. Listen, I'm not knocking anyone. It is difficult for me to accept based on what I see in scripture. That someone 20 years old, 22 years old, 25 years old can be an apostle. They can be called to the apostolic. But there are different levels to the apostolic. First of all, whether you like it or not, the Bible is very clear on some systems and processes that an apostle must perform. An apostle must be one that is organized, mature. Come on. Not, not, not lightheaded and, fleet, and fleety. Must be organized because an apostle has a responsibility to organize the church of God. To keep order. To bring order. That's what Paul was doing to the Corinthian church. He brought order and direction. Come on. He brought order concerning praying in tongues in church. He brought order concerning prophesying in church. He brought order concerning um, men doing all kinds of things with women in church. And, and, and all these kinds of things. He brought order to Rome. Hallelujah. He brought order to the Galatians. You foolish Galatians. Who has bewitched you? He brought order. And so there needs to be maturity because if you are struggling with, 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 with lust and with greed and with immaturity in your life, but God has called you to be a prophet or an apostle and you're walking in the office of apostle and people are expecting you to bring order to a church and your life is in disorder, you are going to bring only disorder to the place where there is need for order. And so there is a need for maturity. When a 55-year-old woman or man has to go to her apostle, who is 22, who has not even seen 1% of what she or he has seen in the natural, have no experience in what to do when husband say this to wife because he or she is not even married yet. Don't have that experience, that insight, that connect. They're going to only try to function and give guidance and counsel on the basis of the word they know because they know the word, you know. They've been studying the word from they were seven years old. At 22, they know the Bible back and front. So it's not that they don't know the word. It's not that they're not called to the office. But I'm saying to you, there is a time when you must be in the Arabian desert. There, there is a time when you must learn how to function. See, Apostle Heather said she was told years before, but she had to learn how to function and she had to mature as a woman of God. Come on. 
she had to mature not just as a saint of God but as a woman of God which are sometimes two different things hallelujah I can tell you even as functioning even in functioning as a pastor there were times when even at home and even with people I thought some things and said some things and did some things that made me realize yo you are so still not matured for the role that you are playing you need help you need help my wife is one of the most powerful anointed persons I know she's deep in the spirit but sometimes she says some things and does some things in the natural that makes me say, God, I thank you that you have mercy on us. Because sometimes we say things and we don't even think. We say things about things that we don't even think. Because that level of maturity is still being built in us by God. And so don't be in a rush to become an apostle or a prophet. Be in a rush to learn the ways of God. So that when he gives you an office, that office can be executed with great grace and mercy and peace and joy to the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ. Too many of us are in a rush. We love the title rather than the work. We love the victory rather than the training. We love the end rather than the journey. But without the journey, the end will be, will be thwarted or distorted. Without the training, the victory will be fleeting or by drugs. And that's why so many people today are turning to Obia men. They call them in Nigeria, Samgoma, false spirits. Because they don't want the journey of God. They don't want to pay the price. They just want the victory. They want the big crowd. They want the big money. The nice cars. They don't want to develop maturity. Because you can have spiritual not maturity. You can be so spiritually mature. But naturally immature. And your natural immaturity can affect your spiritual maturity. As a matter of fact, can I go as far as to, to just say something out of, my, out of my soul? Let me say something out of my soul. If I had to choose, if I had to choose, I would rather work towards my spiritual maturity from my natural maturity than try to work from my spiritual maturity to my natural maturity. You might say, Pastor, but why? I don't understand because spiritual maturity is powerful. It is awesome. Guys, I'm telling you, I have seen, experienced, and witnessed some people with tremendous spiritual maturity for years. People that have been impressed, impressive. I know some personally, spiritually mature even to this day, but naturally immature even to this day. Years and years, they preach and teach and prophesy, and you'll be like, oh my God. God, this person is amazing. What an awesome anointing. But when you hear the things that they're doing out of their lives, out of themselves, the things they're doing to people, when the anointing is not in play, you wonder, my God, no, I, do, I will not believe that this person who is so anointed could do these things. But if you are spirit, if you are naturally mature, where you know the difference between right and wrong, you make good decisions, sound decisions, you are, you're, 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 you're in control, you know how to do and to assess and to, and to develop, then you can always grow in spiritual maturity because spiritual maturity is not directly proportional to us. We can just present a mature being before God and he makes you spiritually mature like that. But you present a spiritually mature person before God and he still has to walk with you a thousand miles to get you naturally mature. Mm -hmm. That's, mature That's right. As Pastor Masha is saying in the background, there are many spiritually mature people who are hurting people like, whoa, naturally. Apostle Heather, you know this too. You know so many of them. Because the fruit has not developed. It's part of being naturally mature is not just fruit of the spirit. Is fruit of the natural as well. Hallelujah. 
So the fruit of the spirit is evident when you're naturally mature. Because you will, in your natural maturity, you will submit to the spiritual maturity. And guess what? Your spiritual maturity will also submit to your natural immaturity. Now that's the most dangerous thing. Listen to me again. Let me say it slowly. Your spiritual maturity will submit will submit to your natural immaturity. Anybody figure that out? You, you, you understand what I'm saying? So when you, even though you're spiritually mature, when you're teaching on the pulpit, when you're prophesying, when you're, when you're, when you're doing your live, when, it, when, your, spirit, when your, your natural immaturity comes up in dealing with people at work, or in dealing with people in certain circumstances, or in dealing with people on the road, when a taxi man cut you off, or when somebody bad drives you, or when you someone takes your parking space that you were lined up to go into, and someone takes that, your spiritual maturity, though your, though your spiritual maturity is saying, it's okay, calm down, I have another space for you, calm down, just pray for them, calm down, calm down, your natural immaturity overrides that, and you start to curse. What an idiot! Pop, pop! You idiot! You fool, fool! Why you drive so bad? Are you an idiot? You begin to curse because your spirit, your natural immaturity, overrides your spiritual maturity, and that's what is dangerous. So I'm saying to you, that's my, that's me explaining in detail why I would prefer. I would rather both of them coming at the same time but if i had to choose which one i wanted to start with i would rather start with natural maturity and grow into my spiritual maturity because natural maturity means that you will be more diligent come on you'll be more intentional come on you'll be more goal oriented you'll be more purposeful come on you would set boundaries rules and you would pursue God from the position of maturity. But if God made you spiritually mature from the womb, you know you're anointed from the womb, but you're immature. Oh God, man. I don't want to hear a thing from anybody. Who oh, got alone on my, my head? I don't want anybody who is head over me. God is my head. God, that's immaturity. That is immaturity. I don't listen to anybody but God. Immaturity. Jesus himself listened. Jesus himself listened. Come on. And that is why you will hear, you will hear people say, Hallelujah. Oh, I see so much signs coming from it that are her. That is why um, I stay or that is what draw me the sign for yes. when the person is outside of Hallelujah. 19. Hallelujah. There's a big disparity. Big disparity. Yes, Pastor Marsha is say there are many people in church that um that, that say I, I can't leave my church because my prophet he prophesies accurately. I see signs and miracles and wonders coming from my prophet. But uh yes, and so the, the, the fruit is not is not there, which to be honest with you, the fruit of the spirit is often uh, what you'd call it now um, not important to someone who is naturally immature the fruit of the spirit is not important to someone who is naturally immature that's correct um, natural immaturity facilitates pride come on and fear natural immaturity facilitates pride and fear and so if someone is steeped in pride and fear i can guarantee you that they are not as mature as you would think that they should be so you can be spiritually mature and still be oppressed by the spirit of pride and fear so that spiritual maturity allows you to minister to other people. 
to deal with other people's situations by the grace of God with power. I myself, can I be can, can, can I be transparent? I myself, I'm still struggling with elements of my own maturity. Why? Because I know for a fact that God has used me to do great things for many people. But I'm struggling to come to that com complete, complete, complete 110% conviction that the same things that God used me to do for others, He will use me to do for myself. And so I'm struggling with that. Come on, if I can't be honest and tell you where my, 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 my flaws are, then I'm not fooling anyone. God already knows. And so you now know how to pray for me. Because people often don't want to pray for someone who they think when they pray for them, they, are, they, they see miracle signs and wonders. When they teach, they hear great revelation. Oh, he could never have any problems. He could never be struggling with anything. Because when he intercedes for me, great things happen. That's because they have spiritual maturity. Spiritual maturity is not for you. It's for others. Natural maturity, when combined with spiritual maturity, is for all, including you. But our natural immaturity will make us say... You know, because I am not, um, I am not so, I am not so handsome. I am not like um, Apostle Heather. I, I, I don't have this like Apostle Heather, or what, or I'm not like um, Evangelist Raquel, and so therefore, um, I, I, I don't, I, I don't believe God is gonna do these things for me. That's immaturity. This is Im that's immaturity. And so when you put on the gown or the garment or you pick up the scepter of the anointing and the scepter of the ministry and the scepter of the grace of God and you step out, oh my goodness man, demons tremble, oh God, <coughs> excuse me, demons tremble at your very presence and then you go home and you cringe up in a corner, oh God, Lord, if I didn't do if I didn't do things the way I'm supposed to today, please help me, forgive me, Lord. Lord, I know that I'm and and, and, and we just bawling and begging and pretending as if we're not a child of God. Immaturity. And so it's important, guys, that we identify the value of who we are in God. It's important that we spend time focusing on our own personal maturity. Do not run down ministry. Do not chase down ministry if, you are, if there's turmoil in your house. Do not chase after ministry if you are not good at managing your household. Ladies, do not seek to go preach the gospel and tell people what they're to do if you're not doing what you're supposed to do at home. Your house nasty, unclean. And I don't mean this disrespectfully. Dishes, dirty dishes in your sink. Your bed unspread. But you spend time, hours before God. That's fine. No issue. I'm not saying that it's comparative or one or the other. But then after you finish your time with God, you spend the rest of your time praying for people on the phone. You're calling up people. How are you? You're okay? And people are saying, my God, this woman is so lovely. This man is so loving, so kind. And you're praying and you're praying. And all day, you're doing spiritual things, spiritual things, spiritual things. And that's fine. And God is never going to curse you for that. He's not going to be upset with you for that. But I'm also saying to you, your bed is unspread. Your house unswept. Your dishes, dirty dishes in the sink. Breakfast not made for your, made for your family. I, can't you all see that I'm doing spiritual things? Can't you see I'm doing God's work? That is immaturity. Immaturity. First thing in the morning. First thing, by the way, you get up out the bed. If you can, spread the bed first. And then go meet with God. Because God likes to meet in a clean place. When I was a young believer, I lived in a complex called Oakland on Constant Spring Road. And I was, I was, I was on fire for God. I used to wake up at 4 o'clock, 3 o'clock in the morning and pray. And 
before I pray, I used to make sure if there were any dishes in the sink, them clean. Because I'm expecting God to come. I can't have Jesus come into my kitchen where I'm having in my dining room and kitchen where I'm having devotion and one whole heap of dirty dishes in the sink. Are you kidding? That's the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. I would open the door at 3 o'clock in the morning. Make sure that the, the living room, the kitchen is swept out. Because I used to do it in the dining room like I'm doing now. And the back door and the kitchen, the kitchen and the dining room were in one. I used to sweep out the kitchen. Make sure the place clean for him. But we want to invite God into our room with the bed unspread. In our night, he tete -a -tete. We move to the side a little bit to pray because we're in the spirit and all kind of private parts showing. And we think that's okay. It's not okay, people of God. I'm not pointing any finger and I'm not trying to make anybody feel bad. I'm trying to teach you elements of maturity. It is maturity, not spiritual maturity. The spiritual maturity will have you wake up in the morning and spend all day with God. Spiritual maturity will cause you to feel good about doing that. Natural maturity says, I have other responsibilities. So God, I'm giving you the first four hours of the morning. Then I'm going to go take care of my family. I'm going to go wash the dishes, clean the house, make sure that everything is good. If I couldn't do it before, I meet with God. You understand me? Natural maturity is necessary to bring completeness to your spiritual maturity. Amen. And so even to this day, I like with my space. I like with my space where I am having my, my um, God as present. I like when it fix up and clean up and tidy up because I'm inviting the King of Kings. He who is perfect. You never see Jesus dirty. How heaven has been described is that it is beautiful, spotless. Oh my God. Sorry, 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 Apostle. Sorry about that. But God bless you. Thank you so much for joining us. Hallelujah. God bless you. And so we, our, our atmosphere must be spotless. We must treat it as if someone is coming over to visit. When you're single and you're, and you're courting, and someone is coming to pick you up to take you out on a date. You don't let them come into the house and the, the living room is a mess. Things all over the place. Dirty dishes in the sink and it's smelly. You have one room and one bathroom. The person needs to use the bathroom. The bathroom not messy. You clean up everything before you know that person comes. Every single thing. Talk truth. Am I talking truth or am I telling lie? You fix up the place spotless. You clean the place nice because a future husband is coming over and so I don't want to think that a future wife is coming over and I don't want her to think that I am, I am not clean. You fix up the place. But Chow, it's only Jesus. I can't stay in a minority. It's only Jesus. He, he's not concerned about my bed not spread. He only wants to be with me. Guys, I'm not saying make it become a ritual. I'm not saying make it become a God over you. I'm not saying make it become, um, you know, something that, oh, oh my God, I can't, I, can't, I can't pray yet. I can't have my devotion because this is in the sink to wash up. No, no, I'm not saying that. Many times I've had my devotion, invite God and wet a tip and, and dishes wash afterwards. Many times. But I'm saying that the maturity says, if I have the opportunity and the time, that must be a priority. Because I'm inviting the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords to come spend time in my presence. And I need my presence to be accommodating as a form of respect for who he is and what he brings. If I do it for men, I certainly must do it even more for God. I remember I was talking to a, a brother of mine once. And... Um, uh, he says he just put on his slippers and his shorts and go to church because the church that he goes to it doesn't matter they don't they don't look for um for garments they don't look at clothes that's fine and that's that's not an issue i'm not raising that because i disagree with their context or their position i'm not i swear to you i'm not but i raise this point if you're naturally mature you do not just look at the fact that God who is spirit and how he deals is more spirit because he's looking at the heart rather than the garment. 
It's not just about that. Natural maturity says, I'm going into the presence of the Most High God. And if I dress up to go see President Obama at the White House, or President Biden, or when he was in the White House, President Trump, if I dress up and put on my best clothes, my best suit, and my best perfume, I put on my Prada shoes, I make sure my car is washed, everything because I'm going to see a man who goes to the toilet just like you, who when, get, when caught, get, he bleeds just like you, who when, 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 when something bad is said about them, they hurt just like you, a human being, and you go through all of this, you go and get an expensive hairstyle, you buy a new weave, Brazilian, thousands of dollars, just to go take a picture with the president. But you go to God any old way. Any old way. And some might say, but pastor, take it easy a little bit. Take it easy. I only see the president once in a lifetime, but I see God every day. Then you should be ready for God as if you're only seeing him once in a lifetime every day. Am I saying that you must dress up in a nice suit every time you're going to have devotion? No. But I don't I couldn't come to my come to this time of devotion in a marina, in a cutoff thing. Ladies, if you're going to minister at church, you're gonna preach, you're gonna sing, you're gonna do any of those things. That's the day when you must make sure you look at yourself in the mirror, not as looking sexy or nice, but as looking fit to go before the one who is righteous and holy and true. You're gonna go stand on the pulpit and half of your top out. You dress so tight that your yes, your breasts are covered, but because you are busty, they are so squeezed down that people are distracted from your singing to your breast. That was not a mature decision that you made to wear that particular dress. It's your dress and it's nice. And nothing is wrong with it. It can wear under different occasions. But not in the occasion when you are going to be the one leading people into God and they are distracted by what they are looking at instead of what you are doing. And so I'm saying to you, please hear me and not be offended. Hear me. I'm saying to you, I'm not telling you to be religious or super spiritual or any of those things. I'm telling you that God requires for us to have balance. To know when to do something and when not to. To know when to wear something and when not to. I don't have a problem with you wearing a pants or a shorts. None at all. But you're going to do a video singing a song to God and you have on a pants that people are not even hearing what you're saying the men are so focused on that print that is in front of you you have other things that you can put on that look nice for that particular occasion you're inviting the world to look at you or is that what you're doing inviting the world to just look at you and not to the ministry that you're ministering because if that's what you're doing then fine, I repent, I'm sorry, I withdraw my statement. But if you're going to represent Jesus, if you want people to hear what you're saying and not see what you look like, then make sure that your focus is only on what you are going to say, the message you're going to bring, the song you're going to sing, and not on how you look. You can look nice without being distracting. Amen. And yes, I agree, woman of God, some men tie too. Some men put on some outfits, some clothes, some pants because they want women to lust after them. That's the devil. And I don't mean that it is intentional. I don't mean that they put it on and saying, okay, I'm putting on this because they, they, um, the women are going to lust. But I'm saying the same rule that follows for the women follows for the men. You have to look at yourself in the mirror. If you look in the mirror and you can see too much of your private part being, being exposed. And exposed don't always mean in the, in, the, in the fullness of its naturality. But anybody, there is no secret to, to, to how it looks. Because of how it print out, that's the wrong outfit to wear. That one is too tight. You need a size up. Okay? Or you need to properly 
fix yourself. There's a way to fix yourself that, that, that you don't look a particular way in your clothes. But do we care about these things? It requires natural maturity in order for these things to be of value to us. You have to be naturally mature. When you look at yourself in the mirror, when I'm dressing for church in the mornings, I stand in front of the mirror and I don't just look at how my suit looks. I look at how people are going to see me. And so I look and make sure I fix properly so that I don't cause anybody to stumble without it being deliberate so that's what i meant i didn't mean that you were making a decision that you are going to cause somebody to stumble but if you don't pay attention and think about the possibility that you may cause somebody to stumble you may be just as guilty because natural maturity says i consider others even as i consider myself amen you wear a church i remember this pastor he's dead now he, he used to come to church to preach and he was a bodybuilder. He was heavily into weights and these kinds of things. And he would wear spandex, spandex top, spandex top on his big muscular bodybuilding body and a tight pants to church. And he's walking up and down the stage preaching. And when he holds the mic up to his mouth in biceps so big that him hand can hardly curl. And the women would, 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 would naturally be struggling. Even men were looking on and saying, My God, the old man here ticks up. Whoa, he look a muscle. Sometimes you'd feel intimidated by how he looked. And nobody could convince me that he didn't do that deliberately. He knew that was inappropriate, but he did it anyway. He knew that it would cause some people to stumble. But he did it anyway. That's a sign of immaturity. Because he preached good. He prophesied good. Come on. He gave great revelations. So he had spiritual maturity. But he carried himself as naturally immature. Because it didn't matter what his natural self was doing spiritually to some people. And so your spiritual, your natural immaturity can adversely affect your spiritual maturity and the spiritual maturity of other people as well. And so it is better for you to focus on growing in your natural maturity so that when your spiritual maturity comes, it has a place that fits, a place that will nurture it and utilize it for the glory of of the Lord Jesus Christ as Pastor Marsha said there are many people who have great spiritual maturity but they hurt more people than people who have none at all because they are naturally immature let us seek not to be naturally or spiritually immature but let us walk holy and upright according to the will and purpose of God let us spend time developing ourselves if you have anger problems, you're, you're, you're naturally immature. If you have lust problems, you're naturally immature. Come on. And I'm not saying that this is, um, this is necessarily a bad thing. <coughs> because natural immaturity sometimes means that you don't know how or want to seek help for the things that cause spiritual oppression upon you. Anger can be a spirit. Lust can be a spirit, but if you're naturally mature, you will identify that and you will say, you know what, I'm going to go seek spiritual help for this lust and this pride, for this fear, for this rejection. But if you're spiritually mature and naturally immature, you'll say, hear this, I don't need anybody to pray for me. I can pray for myself. I can deliver myself. I don't want anybody to know that me, who's so powerful, who's so anointed, needs help from deliverance from anger, or from fear, or from pride, or from lust, or from masturbation. Are you mad? I'm not letting anybody at all know that. I don't care who. 
Next thing, them will say they don't want, any, want me to pray for anybody anymore. Next thing, this pastor don't invite me back to him church to preach anymore. That's natural immaturity. Full of pride. Amen? And so guys, I hope that you were blessed this morning by this talk. I, again, it didn't go the way I wanted. Uh, I had another plan, but God is faithful. And I give him 100%. I will always only say what God leads me to say. Because it's his job, his work. His, he's the boss. This is not even our ministry. This is God's ministry that he has given us an opportunity to utilize. Um, Brother, Brother Mirage, Brother Cecil, good to see you, mighty man of valor. I pray that you're recovering. I pray that you're in good health. I pray that your heart is right. Hallelujah. In the natural and in the spirit. I saw Sister Sandra saying something earlier. Sister Sandra, are you still on? You're saying something about needing prayer. As we get ready to close, I want to just pray for those who are um having thank you so much I appreciate Sandra Magowan what is can mild anybody remember attack, mild heart attack ah oh boy I tell you the enemy has been going after the hearts these days after the hearts but God is faithful God is faithful somebody on um on, on Instagram says good teaching God bless you thank you so much to God be the glory Holy Spirit of God you are awesome I thank you hallelujah mild heart attack all right uh, yes, so let's let's just pray for um, all the things that we we continue to pray about from yesterday: heart heart disease, heart attack, kidney disease, hypertension, hypotension, um, and 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 um, and for those who are in the way of the hurricane. And so, as we have been taught how to be naturally and spiritually mature, let us now apply that natural and spiritual maturity in seeking help from God for others at this moment and so father we just thank you even now for your blessing and favor towards us thank you for your peace that passeth all understanding thank you lord for the revelation of who you are and what you desire from us in this day and in this season thank you lord that by your holy spirit we have spiritual maturity in us waiting to come to the fore but it means our natural maturity to tap in by humility by grace by mercy by confidence and by truth and so we tap into your word that says healing is the children's bread we tap into your word that says by your stripes we are healed we tap into your word that says we have power to tread upon every serpent of sickness of heart disease of heart attack of black blocked arch arteries Oh God Almighty, those serpents of kidney stones, those serpents of gallbladder disorder, those yes. serpents, oh God Almighty, of fibroids, we yes. trample upon those serpents and scorpions of hypertension and diabetes and hypotension yes. in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We trample upon them this morning yes. by the fire of the living God, by the power of the Holy Spirit. Father, we reverse every heart attack, every heart attack spirit, every and every 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 blood clot in the arteries and every blood clot that has been loose to travel through the veins towards the heart or towards the brain. I reverse that curse or to the lungs. I set the fire of God into every vein, every vein, every vein to burn out block arteries, to burn out every blockages, everything, oh God Almighty, that seeks to kill your people, to cause untimely death. We reverse them now. Every kidney, kidney failure, kidney disease, kidney stone, we reverse them by fire. I speak new kidneys, I speak new nervous system, a new I speak new menopausal system in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I speak new heart, a new heart, new heart, new heart. I speak new heart, every space in the heart. I speak newness in the name of Jesus, Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. There is nothing you cannot do, nothing you cannot do. You brought life back, which means that in bringing life back, you gave new kidney, new heart new liver, new spleen, new nervous system, new joint and marrow. Everything was new in Lazarus when you called him back from the dead because everything old in him had perished and rot. Yes, and so we know that a new heart is nothing for you. A new kidney is nothing for you. For you. New liver is nothing for you. Killing cancer is nothing for you. Yes, and so Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, if we be your children, we call upon you this morning. 
Visit us, Lord. Visit us. We press in like the woman with the issue of blood this morning. We press in like the woman bent over for 18 years. We press in like Jairus who came and said, Lord, my daughter is in need. We press in like Darkus. We press in like the centurion. We press in and we say, Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, touch, touch with your healing hands. Curse cancer this morning on our behalf. Curse hypertension and hypotension this morning on our behalf. Curse kidney failure. <coughs> Reverse the need for dialysis this morning. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Reverse the need for heart um, transplant, heart surgery. Reverse the need for any stem or any implants into the heart. Reverse the need, oh God, that doctors will see and know that you are the ultimate doctor, the best of the best, the greatest of the greatest. Lord, I place every other sickness, every other sickness, every other sickness that your people are experiencing, back pains, knee pains, joint pains, headaches, sinusitis, flu, deteriorating vertebrae, any sickness, O oh God, in the bodies of your people this morning, I place them before you. Spiritual sickness and natural sickness, heartache, pain, disappointment, depression, mental illness. I place them before you this morning, O oh God, and I say, Father, if there is anyone hearing my voice or anyone in their families that are experiencing any of these things, I speak now to them and I command that spirit, that unclean spirit of infirmity to go now. Loose and go. Loose and go. I command you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth and the power of the Holy Spirit. <coughs> loose and go now. Up and out. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Thank you, Lord, for your healing hand and your healing power extended to us in the name of Jesus Christ. Yes, and Father, we ask even now that you will put a hedge of protection, a seal around the Cayman Islands as they are undergoing the ravages of burial. I pray, O oh God, that you will keep them in perfect peace, that you will protect them. They need protection more than any other nation because they are so flat. They have no natural protection. But God, I thank you that you are their spiritual protection. You are their peace be still in times of trouble. And so, Father, we speak a peace be still in agreement with you concerning Cayman Islands. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I thank you, Lord, that you will cover them and guard and keep them. I thank you for speedy recovery of those who have been victims of this hurricane over Jamaica and the other islands, Caribbean islands, from Grenada uh, to um, Bar Barbados and the other islands. Oh God Almighty, I pray for speedy recovery. I, speak, I pray that you will bless them, but I pray more than anything else, oh God Almighty, that every person from government to the simple man on the street will come to realize that we are at the disposal of the elements without you. That men may come to recognize that without Jesus, without you in our lives, without you as the author and finisher of our faith, we are victims of a system that we cannot fight. And so Lord, I pray for the souls of men. I pray for the souls of our leaders. I pray for the souls of all those in authority. I pray for the souls of the general people about that do not know you as Lord and Savior. I pray for the souls of those who are in false religions. I pray for the souls of the Jewish people and I pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May your will alone be done in the earth because you didn't create man just to have an alternative plan. You created man to know that we can fulfill your plan and be the champion on earth as it is in heaven. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. And amen. Hallelujah. God bless. God bless. Come on, give God a round of applause or a hallelujah. If you're in the space, then you can just say hallelujah. Highest praise to the Lord who took us through devotion this morning. Glory to God. I see that people were, and yes, we have light. So many places in Jamaica don't have light. 
we could have uh, we could have been missing from devotion this morning but we give God thanks that he preserved our light so that we could get it right and you know I thank God that um, uh, many many about two or three years ago uh, the Lord impressed on our hearts that even though it's expensive even though it's at a big cost you should have the two um, internet systems at your house we had one internet system first and that was working well and um, when the Lord says get another internet system the other service provider and, and we looked at the cost it was I'm telling you it wasn't cheap and somebody volunteered to help um, with, the, with the payment of it um, somebody volunteered to have the, the help us help us with the payment of it but they um, but they they, they eventually couldn't continue and so we have had to carry it and God has been faithful God has been faithful and now the one that God told us to, 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 um, to add new is the only one that's working for us and for you and so that's the one that you're on this morning the one that God told God says in the fullness of time you will see the value of what I'm saying to you and we have now seen the fullness of the value of God's wisdom and so we thank God that he is the wisest of all wise. Good morning, Pastor Janice Tyson. Love you, woman of God. Hallelujah. Thank you so much. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. And so I just want to say God blessings to each and every one of you. It's time for communion. Hallelujah. Uh, hallelujah. Yes, we trust him always and believe him always because his ways are perfect. Even when what he says doesn't come to pass immediately. 14 years for David to take the throne and many obstacles. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But yet still, it took Abraham quite a few, maybe 16 years or so, maybe more, before Isaac came. But he still came. God's promises are yes and amen. They may not function as we want, may not come when we want them, but they will still come on time. Keep believing. God is faithful. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Evangelist Montague, God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you for showing up. God bless you. Hallelujah. And so as the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth did the example in the upper room when he gave the disciples the, 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 his body and his blood, hallelujah, before his death, so we too honor his death, burial, and resurrection by eating of his body and drinking of his blood. And so Lord Jesus, we thank you this morning for the honor of being in your presence and hearing from you and being taught by you. We ask that you will sanctify and consecrate these emblems even now, that they may be to our bodies health and strength, prosperity and good success, and make us into a soil that will bear fruit of truth for you, whether we are youth or elders. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. And so as the Lord Jesus Christ took the bread, he blessed it and broke it. He gave it to the disciples and he said, Eat, this is my body, broken for you. As often as you eat of it, you do it in remembrance of me. Eat ye all of it in faith, in Jesus' name. Mm. Hallelujah. And likewise he took the cup. He blessed it and took a sup and he said, Drink, this is my blood, the blood of the new covenant. As often as you drink of it, you do it in remembrance of me. Drink ye all of it in faith. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you so much again, guys, for joining us this morning. May the blessings of the Lord that make rich and add no sorrow be upon you, each and every one of you. Lady Babbitt, hallelujah. God bless you, God bless you, God bless you. Thank you for joining. Sorry that you're, you're joining just as we are exiting. But still, like the, like the people who got employed just before work ended and they still got the same pay, I still declare God's full pay upon all those who are coming on right now. Full pay. Please remember to like and share so that others can be blessed by the word that the Lord gave this morning. Those who um, didn't, who came on late and feel that they've missed something, you can always uh, watch it over on Facebook. Amen? But like and share, please like and share so that others can be blessed. Raise your hands for the blessing. 
And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you his peace. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Go forth, my family, and have an amazing day. God's way for our God has already shaken everything that is evil out of your day. His way in Jesus' name. Remember, Jesus loves you and we love the whole owner too. On behalf of Pastor Marsha Weird, I'm Rowan Weird saying, have a fantastic day. If you're in Jamaica or the Caribbean, stay dry, stay prayed up. If you're in the rest of the world, stay in the spirit. Stay prayed up and stay believing. Remember, never end your prayer without remembering or asking the Holy Spirit to remind you. Pray in this season for the souls of men and for the peace of Jerusalem and you will be in good favor with God. Amen. That is coming straight from heaven. Take it as gospel. Amen. God bless you. Remember to do something good for someone today. Do the best you can in any way that you can. If it's even just prayer, even though that's the most important thing. Pray for those who are in the, in, in the, in the throes of this storm and maybe many other storms that are to come during this hurricane season. Pray against them that they will not come. And that those who got allowed to come, that people will recover, no one will die, uh, but that the blessings of the Lord will be evident and people will be saved in Jesus' name. Have a good one, guys. God bless you. Bye. You are great.